when did you realise David was the one for you? It was so weird because I, I had asked someone to bring some people down for dinner because I'd come back from America. I had no gay friends in England anymore, really. Um, all my friends were in AA and stuff like that. So I was rattling around at the house and I thought it'd be nice to meet some people. Um, and I definitely had no ideas of having a relationship. I was going to stay single for a while. And I was always looking for relationships all throughout my life. Um, and so when David walked through the door that night, it, I, there was something that immediately clicked with him. And then we talked and we had fun. He came down with um, three other friends and we had a lovely evening. And I, we talked, I took him on a tour of the house and we spent a lot of time just talking about what he, you know, his life. I'm not really into I don't spend my life talking about what I do. I'm more interested in what other people do. And, and, and his life, I thought, God, he's an intelligent man. He's got a great job, his own flat. Wow. Um, you know, that's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> and with David, I, I, surreptitiously, he's got his phone number, although everyone spotted it. And I was so excited, I thought, I'd love to see him again. And I phoned him up the next day, it was a Saturday, a Sunday. Um, and they were all off to a Halloween party, so they all left. And Saturday, I thought, what's the... After Halloween party, what's the appropriate time to call someone? So I waited till 11 o'clock, and I called him, and um, I said, well, I really enjoyed seeing last night. Would you like to have dinner in London, have a takeaway? And so we had a lovely takeaway, and, and we, you know, we kind of... Our, our romance was instant but slow, and we didn't live together for quite a while. The thing I struck me about David was, from the word go, he was... You know, it, he wasn't in awe of me. He was always going to be confrontational. He would always tell me the truth. Um, we do... I've learned that relationships have to be 50-50. And when Janet just said, you know, about the nasty... I don't really think the nasty side of Elton comes out very much. Not to him, anyway. Maybe we've had a couple of rows. And we never go to bed without sorting it out. We never, go to, bed, we never go to bed angry with each other. He's my soulmate. He's the person that I speak to first thing in the morning and last thing at night. And... You know, every week, this is going to be so cheesy, but I'm going to tell you. Um, every week since we've met, um, we met on a Saturday. No matter where we've been, we send each other a card and write about whether we're together or if I'm in America and he's in England, I courier and he couriers the card to me. So that every Saturday, we open a card and we read what we have to write and we express our love for each other in it. You've done and that for 17 thanks. years? Huh? For 17 years? You've every done that. Saturday. It's funny, I mean, I would argue, having been in the media for 20-odd years in this country, when this kind of discussion would not have got that kind of reaction, and you and David had been a, a real trailblazing couple, when you got married, it was the first day that you could do that. It was just a wonderful opportunity to be able to... I've been through so many situations where same-sex couples have... Um, when one of them's died, the other couple has been left by the other person, his other partner. And then the families have come in and taken everything because the other person has no rights. This gave us rights, um, as we should have. And because we are a famous gay couple, probably the most famous gay couple, we wanted to do it on the first day and say, yeah, this is great. This is a wonderful opportunity for us. Thank you for what you've given to us. This is what we've been waiting for, and we're going to celebrate it. So, I mean, I was incredibly moved on that day to see how many people came out. Well, that was amazing. Yeah. I mean, again, you couldn't have imagined that scene in Britain 30 years before. It wouldn't have happened. No. It was so moving. I mean, we were astonished. I mean, we thought we might get the old fl odd flower bomb coming our way. <laughs> you know, but uh, not one bad thing. And uh, for that, that's why I live in this country. That's why I love the British public. That's why I always call this place my home. And because I was so grateful for that. I was so proud of this country um, for doing that. Can you as happy as you've ever been now? Yeah, I'm totally, totally the happiest I've ever been. Um, and it's taken me a long time to get here. It took me 43 years to get sober, and it took me about three or four years after that after to work on myself. But it's been worth the work, and it's been worth the wait, and I don't regret anything in my life because it's got me to where I am now. You, you said earlier that your song was probably your, your favourite because of the, the circumstances behind how you wrote it and everything else. Of all the people, that you've ever met in your life, if you could dedicate it tonight to one, who would it be? David. Elton. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.